everything we've done up to this point, we've had a fixed level of labor and capital inside the economy. But it's it's clear that in one of the really big changes over the last 30 years is not only that trade in goods has increased, but there's been an increase in the amount of capital, physical capital, foreign direct investment that flows between countries, and also an increasing number uh, of, of people that move across borders, uh, immigration. So I'd like to look at the, some of the basic ex expectations within a, a neoclassical hectarolene framework when there is a, an increase in the capital stock. In a separate video will do a labor stock increase, but let's let's start first with uh, with capital. And I want to do this with a small country that is labor. So again, this is the hectarolene framework, where we have standard expectations about Y being the labor-intensive good, X is the capital-intensive uh, uh, good. This country is capital abundant, but it's small. So it's going to take the world uh, prices as, as given. And let's assume as well, well, let me, let me I'll get back to that in a second. So we've got this PPF, standard uh, PPF, and now we're going to imagine that there is some increase in the capital stock that changes the, uh, the endowments inside this country. So first thing to keep in mind, there you will be able to, so let's think about how this changes the, uh, the PPF. So if you increase the capital stock, that is clearly going to increase the amount of the capital intensive good that you can produce. Okay, you get more capital, be able to produce more of the capital intensive good. But since labor and capital are both needed for good Y, you're also going to be able to increase the amount of, of the labor intensive good that you can produce. But the increase in the in the possibility to produce X is going to be greater than the increase in the opportunity and the possibility to produce a good Y. So what that means is that the PPF is going to bow out in a particular way. It's going to be skewed out a little bit towards the Y axis, but a lot more towards the uh, towards the uh, the the x-axis. So we've got this new PPF associated with an increase in the capital stock. And let's imagine, as we've talked about before, that this labor abundant country initially produces at point A and consumes at point B. Okay, so this is the, the free trade equilibrium. They're trading, uh, they're, uh, at these world prices, they uh, produce this combination of Y and X and they consume that combination of, uh, of B. Okay, so that's the, uh, the, uh, the free trade outcome um, with the initial um, resources. And you'll notice that they will be ex uh, uh, producing more Y than they consume, so they're exporting Y and importing X. And now let's imagine that this capital stock increase has occurred, and we are going to change the amount of Y and X that are produced given this change in the capital stock. So let me draw the new situation.
where we've got the green line is now tangent to the new PPF. So this is the new production point. Call that A prime. It turns out that Y production is going to fall. And X production is going to rise. Now why why is that? What they're doing at the same at the same prices, uh, and it's given by the uh, these world prices you know, with the, the slope of the green line, you're going to have a tendency to change the combination of the two goods. So let's say that they, they had the same price and suddenly they get this resource that is particularly attractive uh, in the production of X, the capital intensive good. So at the same prices for the goods, and they've got more of the, of the capital stock in, in the economy, Essentially, the, the cost of producing this capital-intensive good has gone down because they now have more of the resources used in the, in the production of, um, of good X. So they'll expand the production of X, but they can only do so by drawing at least some labor out of the labor-intensive sector. So what they do is that they draw resources out of Y, labor, out of Y, to, to use in uh, combination with the new capital that's now available. And so because they're taking resources out of Y, the production of the labor-intensive good will fall as a consequence of the expansion in the production of X, which was a consequence of the capital stock increase. Okay? So, when you have this circumstance of a capital stock increase in the labor abundant country at fixed prices, then what you have is that the, the production of X goes up and the production of Y goes down. Now, let's Think about what will happen to the amount that is of the, of the two goods that are consumed. Actually, before, well, no, this is related to that. Okay, so you've had an increase in the PPF, an increase in the capacity to produce goods, and we see that the national income has gone up. Okay, remember the green line. Uh, the world price uh, with, the, with the slope equal to the world prices going through the production points is the value of national income. So the value of national income goes up. So the increase in resources increases the amount that you can finally consume. Now if you recall from the hexer framework, we had homothetic taste. If you increase income, keeping prices the same, then you will increase the consumption of the two goods in the same proportion. What does that mean? If we take a line and go through point B, so you have the same prices, but you increase income, you're going to consume the two goods in the same proportion. And this is one of the uh, aspects of, of Hector Ali. Now, what do you see going on here? The amount of trade that actually takes place gets smaller. So what we see here is that the production of Y goes up, I'm, I'm sorry, goes down, the exported good, the amount of X production, the imported good, goes up, so what you have is a squeeze on the amount of trade that this country actually sends out into the 
into the world market. So you can um, see that. Um, I've got too many things going on here, so let me let me draw that again. So that's point A and point B. Oh, that's not right. That's A prime. Okay, that's the new production point. B is consumption under autarky. B prime is the New uh, consumption under under I'm sorry B was the product uh, the consumption under uh, before the capital stock increase B prime was the consumption after the capital stock increase and what you see here is that the amount of trade that occurs goes down okay the amount of X that is imported. Uh, is going down. The amount of Y that's being exported is going down. So what you have is a reduction in the amount of trade that occurs as a consequence of the capital stock increase. The country, um, so there'll be a reduction in the amount of trade. Now, if you think about it, this, this really is, is quite intuitive. In the Hector Lane framework, this country exported good Y because it was labor abundant relative to the rest of the world. As there's an increase in the capital stock, what you have is that the country is becoming more like the rest of the world. The capital stock coming in reduces the amount by which it's labor abundant. It becomes more like its trading partners. So the accumulation of capital will tend to decrease the incentives to trade because the country is not as different from the rest of the world as it, as it was before. So the amount of trade contracts. Okay. Now, Final uh, point to make about this. What if this all occurred for a, a large country? Okay, we've done this with fixed world prices. The expansion of, uh, of, uh, the, of the capital stock in, in this country reduces trade, but it doesn't affect the world. If this were a large country, and all of this takes place, so everything that we've talked about takes place as well, and you start sending less of the, of your, of the labor-intensive good abroad. Okay? So we've had um, this, this labor-abundant country is going to send less Y into the international market, will import less of X, the... Of, of, the, of, of the imported good. So the expansion of the capital stock in the labor abundant country, if it is large, is going to tend to result in a decrease in the world price of X and an increase in the price of Y. They're restricting the amount of exports and demanding less of the imported good. So that's going to tend to increase the relative price of the labor intensive good. If you go back to this graph, now you're going to have an increase in 
the, uh, uh, the price of Y and the decrease in the price of X. So you might start to move back to a point like this where that black line is the new relative price of X, a lower price of X, higher price for Y. Okay, they respond by producing more of the labor intensive good and you're going to be able to consume at a higher level of national welfare as a consequence of the price change. So, to sum all of this up, and I know this is a, you know, a particularly complicated uh, graph, if you have a change in the endowment inside a country in this Hexerolene framework, that is going to change production patterns. If it's a labor abundant country, increasing the, the capital stock, it reduces the amount of trade that occurs because it produces more of the imported good, so it produces it at home. It produces less of its export good. So trade contracts as the country becomes more like the rest of the world. If it's a large country, that will then tend to change the world relative price of the good. You'll tend to have an, in, an improvement in your terms of trade. This labor abundant country will see an increase in the price of the labor intensive good if there's been an increase in the capital stock. And the, um, and, and we'll get a, a higher level of national income and a higher level of national welfare associated with that, that terms of trade improvement. Okay. So another video will do the labor stock increase in the labor abundant country.